Okay, now I want to talk about a great web development tool for working with APIs. It's called Postman. The website is getpostman.com and it's available in kind of two different versions. One, you can download the application, so for Mac, Windows, or Linux. And there's also a Chrome plugin that you can get. Now, I've downloaded the actual application. I'm going to be showing how the actual application works. And this is what it looks like here. Now you can log in, you can create an account, log in so that you can save all the information that you're using, um, so all the tests that you're running. Like I said, this is a tool for working with APIs. So if you're doing some server-side coding and you want to be testing to make sure that your server-side code, whether it's in Node.js, Ruby, PHP, whatever you're using, you want to make sure that the pages that you're writing are working properly, you can use this tool to test them. So I can, inside of here, choose the method that I'm going to use. So get and post, these are the two most common. But put, uh, put and uh, delete, head and options, I will use them occasionally as well. Just for a simple test here, though, let's use a get request. And I want to put in a request to the JSON placeholder website. This is a great free API. And I could request users. So this is the URL that I'm going to be sending a fetch request. It's like if you had to write the JavaScript code to do a fetch to the JSON placeholder website. This does that work for you. You don't have to write any code. You just put in the URL. This is what I want to request and you can specify a query string inside here if you want. Um, so params, you can specify what you want to add for the key value pairs. Headers, if there's any specific headers that you need to add. So let's say I was uploading a file and I needed to specify that the file type that I was uploading was a, a JPEG. So I could add inside here a header for Content type. You can see autocomplete helps making helps make writing these things a lot easier. And image slash JPEG. So if I were uploading, if I was doing a post or a put and I was actually uploading an image, I could come into the headers and I could add the header, add the value. We're not going to do that, so I use the little X over here. I can get rid of that for my request. We're just doing a very basic one to begin with. So using the get method, this is the URL that I want. And you click the send button down here. This is where I'm going to get the response. So send. There we go. This is the pretty JSON that we're getting back. If you want the raw, you can get it like this. Pretty makes it easier to work with because you can collapse the various segments of the JSON that's coming back or the XML that's coming back. Um, you can see that the data that's coming back can be of many different types and you might want to switch between them. So say it's HTML you're expecting, you can see what it looks like as XML or as HTML or as raw text. Uh, headers. These are the response headers. There's the body of the response. There's my HTTP status code, this is how long it took, and this is the size of the file that was returned. So there's lots of information that's going to be coming back to you. Now this works if I've been writing the server-side API, so I've got a bunch of PHP pages that are going to be generating uh, JavaScript, uh, uh, sorry, JSON or XML, and I want to make sure those are working. So I can type in the URLs, click send, whether it's get or post, um, if it's going to be post, posting the params, here's the body down here. So the params, this section right here, this is your query string. And the body, this is what you're posting to the server. So this is the body of the request. And you can see how you want it formatted, whether it's uh, form URL encoded or form data, or if it's even binary. So you can take a file and upload it and test that. So as form data, we're working with key value pairs the same as if we would be in a query string. 
So I'm going to be submitting, let's say, a parameter called username Bob. And then there's going to be another one, user ID 7. Um, I'm just making up parameters here. These aren't specifically for this. But if I were doing a post, this is how I could add these things. Title, if I remember correctly, um, users, no, it was posts, that's what it was. If you wanted to add a brand new post, you could send it via post to the posts page, and then inside the body you need a user ID, title, and a body. And then what you get back, um, what you get back from this will be the ID of the post that it created. And I say created loosely, it's just simulating the fact that it was created. All right, so we have said this is the URL that I'm sending it to. I'm not sending anything in the params, there's nothing in the query string. And in the body, form data formatted, these are the fields that I'm sending. So I can send, I can choose to send and then download, so when the body comes back I'll be able to download that file, or I can save what I've done right here so that I can try it again later. Now, even if you don't save, there is a history that gets taken as you... There we go. Yep, yeah, it worked. Uh, there's a history taken as you test things. So my URL and in the body, because I'm using post, the body has some parameters. I unselected username because that wasn't one of the fields. Um, unselecting it means it's not going to be sent to the server, but I can keep it there because I'm maybe I'm toggling these things on and off to test and see what happens. So it worked even without those values being sent. So there's our history. Save the request. Mock the request. Oh, yeah. We're not going to be doing that right now. Mocking up the collection. Um, so, uh, headers. Like I said, you can define additional headers beyond what would normally be sent. The body, if you're using post, you just put the name value pairs inside of here. Get really just the query string and the URL and clicking on params will open up this section that allows you to put in parameters like that. Okay, um, I know this has been a very basic introduction. Postman is a great tool, uh, really helps with server-side API development, or when you are writing the client-side portion, calling on APIs. If you're not sure if you're going to be getting the correct information back, you can use this to test. If your code's not working, if you're not getting the proper response, come in here, enter the URL, set up the query string parameters, set up the um, post, the parameters here for the body. Test and see if you are getting back the correct information. If you're getting back what you expect, you can see the whole format for, uh, I'm going to go back to get, and go send, nothing there, let's try user 6, send, there we go. So I've requested posts, oh, user ID 6, same in both places here. Um, here are all the posts from user ID 6. So this is effectively what I've done by adding this inside here. Send, there it is. Oh, I deleted it. User ID, user ID, and these are case sensitive. Six, you can see it wrote it here as I was entering it. There we go. So, use it to test APIs. When you're experimenting with them, when you haven't got all your code written yet, you can use Postman to test the APIs and see exactly what you're getting back, so you know if your code is accessing the various properties with the right names. Okay, that's all I have to say for today. Any questions, please post them in the comments.